I promised y'all that we would analyze Project 2025 in a real way, the realest way. And that's what we're going to do. This episode, episode 202 of Put It On Something is completely dedicated to the black woman. And once again, I'd like to shout out to Raja P. Henson for using her platform at the BET Awards to call out Project 2025. And a lot of people were ignoring it. Shout out to that queen. So this week, in our analysis of Project 2025, we're going to look at how it may affect the black woman. Okay. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am your homeboy first, and this is the realest, most entertaining show in the game. Put it on some. Again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, put all your people on it. Okay. The source we will be using is CBS News. Okay. I chose that source because I've never heard CBS News be called a, uh, a liberal outlet. All right. Uh, so I, I, I didn't want to use one of these ones, uh, that can be misconstrued as, uh, providing a misleading representation of project 2025 due to his liberal lean or anything like that. Okay. You know, but still fuck, fuck boys and bros gonna, gonna say what they're going to say about it, depending on their political, uh, affiliation. All right. So let's look at it first. They say, what is Project 2025? Okay. Let's look at that before we get into the specifics on how it affects really all women. But, uh, you know, in my breakdown of it, I'm going to really focus on us. Okay. But let's look at it as a whole first. It says, what is tw Project 2025? Uh, it says, Project 2025 is a proposed presidential transition project that is composed of four pillars, a policy guide for the next presidential administration, a LinkedIn style database of personnel who could serve the next administration training for that pool of candidates dubbed the presidential administration Academy and a playbook of actions to be taken within the first 180 days in office. Okay. It is led by two former Trump administration officials, Paul Dan's who was chief of staff staff at the Office of Personnel Management and serves as director of the project, and Spencer uh, Creighton, I'm going to try that, all right, former special assistant to Trump, and now the project's associate director. Project 2025 is spearheaded by the Heritage Foundation, but includes an advisory board consisting of more than 100 conservative groups and the heritage foundation is a conservative think tank and so their job is to do research and shit like that and come up with policies and shit that that really fits uh the conservative movement that's what they do all right uh, much of the focus on and criticism of project 2025 involves its first pillar the nearly 900 page policy book that lays out an overhaul of the federal government Called Mandate for Leadership 2025, the conservative promise, the book builds on a mandate for leadership first published in January 1981, which sought to serve as a roadmap for Ronald Reagan's incoming administration. If you are young and ask your uh, uh, parents or grandparents how they felt about the goddamn Reagan era, ask them about Reaganomics. Okay. Ask them about that shit and how those policies affected black black people as a whole. Okay. And continues. The recommendations outlined in the sprawling plan reach every corner of the executive branch, from the executive office of the president to the Department of Homeland Security to the little known Export Import Bank. The Heritage Foundation also created a mandate for leadership in 2015 ahead of Trump's first term. Two years into his presidency, it touted that Trump had instituted 64% of its policy recommendations, ranging from leaving the Paris Climate Accords, and that was uh, uh, something that was spearheaded by President Obama, uh, that was uh, a global climate initiative to do something about climate change. Uh, well, 
Trump motherfucking that got us out of that shit. Uh, increasing military spending and increasing offshore drilling and developing fellow federal lands. In July 2020, the Heritage Foundation gave its updated version of the book to then White House Chief, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. The authors of many chapters are familiar names for the Trump administration. Pay attention to this shit now. You know, Trump talking about, I don't know who's behind it. I have nothing to do with all that bullshit. Lies, lies, lies. Okay, look at this shit. The authors of many chapters are familiar names from the Trump administration, such as Russ Balt, who led the Office of Management and Budget, former acting defense secretary uh, Chris Miller, and Roger Severino, who was director of the Office of Civil Rights at the Department of Health and Human Services. Okay, so these are the motherfuckers who are really behind this shit. His people. But he talking about he don't know nothing about it. Miss me with that shit. Uh, Bout is the policy director for the 2024 Republican National Committee's platform committee, which adopted the platform at July's convention. John McEntee, former director of the White House Presidential Personnel Office under Trump, is a senior advisor to the Heritage Foundation and said that the group will integrate a lot of our work with the Trump campaign, when the official transition efforts are announced in the next few months. Candidates interested in applying for the Heritage Foundation's presidential personnel database are vetted on a number of political stances, such as whether they agree or disagree with statements like, life has a right to uh, legal protection from conception to natural death, and the president should be able to advance his or her agenda through the bureaucracy without hindrance from unelected federal officials. The contributions from ex-Trump administration officials have led its critics to tie Project 2025 to his re-election campaign, correctly so, though the former president has attempted to distance himself from the initiative. See, this motherfucker's so dumb, he probably does not know. You know, he ain't read no 900-page document. He ain't reading that shit, okay? So he trying to act like he don't know nothing about it, but these are all people who are connected with him. Again, as I've said previously, these folks just want him to do this. That's how they give a fuck about with Trump. They want to use this motherfucker, okay? He wants to use them to have power. He just wants power, okay? He likes to be liked and he wants power. He likes to have power. And they want to use him to do that. That's what they want. That's what they want. So don't let that motherfucker lie to y'all when he's talking about he does not know who's behind this shit. He knows who's behind it. He knows these motherfucking people. These are his people, all right? Now, Let's get into some of the policy shit, okay? What are the Project 2025 plans, all right? Uh, and for right now, let's jump down here to abortion, okay? To abortion. There are some other things I can go to, but some of these other things uh, will not only affect black women, it will also affect uh, the black man, okay? But there's only our women that have to carry a child. So a lot of women that had to go through childbirth, okay? And when I say our women, of course, all women do that, okay? But I'm particularly focusing on the black woman in this case, okay? And there's no slight to sisters of all colors. This, this show, this uh, episode has been dedicated to the black woman because of all the vitriol I've seen uh, thrown uh, at black women due to the candidacy of uh Kamala Harris. Okay. So let's look at this, y'all. It says in recommendations for the Department of Health and Human Services, the agenda calls for the Food and Drug Administration to reverse its 24-year-old approval of the widely used abortion pill. Other proposed actions targeting medication abortion include reinstating more stringent rules. Uh, for the abortion pills use, which would permit it to be taken up to seven weeks into a pregnancy instead of the current 10 weeks. Now, I've heard some women argue that they don't even know that they're pregnant uh, by 10 weeks, okay? I, I, you got to listen to women. You feel me? Because this is something that's completely unique to them. You feel me? For, for brothers out here, when it's something that is that's uniquely uh uh for us, something that's unique to us, hell, I would argue that women need to listen to us. But, but when it comes to something like this, you gotta hear women out. 
And some of them say that they do not even know that they are pregnant by this time. And these motherfuckers ain't say, fuck that. You ain't gonna be able to take this shit after seven weeks. Okay. And it says uh, it would be required to be dispensed in person instead of through the mail. Okay. Now that right there might be difficult. Uh, especially for some of these places like me living in Mississippi, uh, in Mississippi Delta here, you got a lot of places where shit, a doctor's office is few and far between. So what if somebody can't, can't make it to the damn doctor? It goes on to say, the Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative legal group that is on the Project 2025 advisory board, was involved in a legal challenge to the abortion pills 2000 approval and more recent actions from the FDA that made it easier to obtain. But the Supreme Court rejected the case brought by a group of anti-abortion rights doctors and medical associations on procedural grounds. The policy book also recommends the Justice Department enforce the Comstock Act against providers and distributors of abortion pills. That 1873 law, <laughs> an 1873 law, prohibits drugs, medicines, or instruments used in abortions from being sent through the mail. They want to try to enforce some shit put in place during re re uh, uh, Reconstruction. See, I don't think the world has changed some since then. Okay. Uh, goes on to say, now that the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade, the volume states that the Justice Department and the next conservative administration should therefore announce its intent to enforce federal law against providers and distributors of such pills. The guide recommends the next Secretary of Health and Human Services get rid of the Reproductive Health Care Access Task Force established by the Biden administration before Roe's reversal and create a pro-life task force to ensure that all of the department's divisions seek to use their authority to promote the life and health of women and their unborn children. Well, I got some thoughts. I'm about to hit y'all with them. I'm, I'm just trying to lay out What's in that bitch for y'all real quick? We almost done. In a section titled The Family Agenda, the proposal recommends the Health and Human Services Chief proudly state that men and women are biological realities and that married men and women are the ideal natural family structure because all children have a right to be raised by the men and women who conceive them. Further, a program within the Health and Human Services Department should maintain a biblical biblically based so social science reinforced definition of marriage and family now let's take a look at this y'all okay all right so long story short these motherfuckers will have you believe that they just uh uh, uh they're so their beliefs are so biblically based that they just want every child every child is precious and they don't want uh 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 they don't want abortion because they they look at it as murder, and and so forth and so on. And then when you hear that, if you just hear that in the vacuum or read that in the vacuum, you might think these people own the something. Okay, because for first first of all, who would be for abortion? Like for uh, the ending of a pregnancy? You no. Know, uh, uh, I consider pregnancy and childbirth to be one of the great miracles of this world. I really do. That two people can make love. And that sperm can con combine with that egg. And then nine months later, a beautiful human is brought into this world. That's magical to me. Okay. These folks will argue that it's ma magical to them, I, I suppose. But here's the kick. When that beautiful human being gets here, I believe that our government need to, needs to do everything in its power to make sure that that beautiful human being has food and shelter and is properly educated, you know, when it's school time. I believe all that. These motherfuckers will say that you got the right to life 
from birth to natural death. But in between birth and natural death, these motherfuckers are anti food stamps. Because what if you are born into a poor family? These motherfuckers are anti Medicaid. They shit, they want that shit cut. They want to put all these work requirements in there for it. Like you ain't got impoverished people with full time jobs already, goddammit. These motherfuckers, uh, they, don't, they ain't from uh, uh, paying teachers 100 grand. They don't want to do that shit so we can get the highest quality motherfuckers in these schools for these children. They ain't for that. Hell, they want to eliminate the Department of Education. These motherfuckers are pro-death penalty while at the same time acting like they are these big time Christians and shit like that. And, and you know, based on my years of spending 14 years in Catholic schools and, and, and simultaneously growing up in the Baptist church, from what I understand, God was in the Christian faith was a forgiving God, and and and, and uh, 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 Jesus in particular, Jesus in particular, based on what I've read and learned, was about forgiveness, second chance chances. But these motherfuckers pro death penalty, Jack. These motherfuckers pro prisons. Tough on crime, all that kind of shit. Okay? They want your ass thrown away for minor offenses and shit like that. If you if you don't have the complexion for the connection for the protection. Let me add that part. So who they who do they believe he has a right to life? Then do they just want you to get here? They just want you to get here. You got the right to get here, and then once you heal, goddammit, if you die afterwards, that's on you. You just a baby. You were born into this shit. You born into a, a, a family that can't take care of your motherfucking ass. But hey, we passed some shit to get you here. Figure it out. That ain't pro life to me. That's pro birth. They ought to call themselves pro birth. That's it. Pro birth. And there's some evil shit behind a lot of this too, y'all. See, on that side, they got something called uh, the replacement theory, where they think that Jews, uh, rich Jews, are leading some movement to, like, fund shit to bring more immigrants in this bitch and, and also prop up black people. And so all these motherfuckers are going to combine to, to, to uh, replace non-Jewish white people. Some crazy shit. And so they, in their opinion, they think that the birth rate is too low for, for non-Jewish white people. Uh, uh, or uh, who? Wasps. White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. You know what I'm talking about? That they think the birth rate is too low for them, so they need these women pumping out more babies to keep the population up so they won't be replaced. Some sinister shit behind this. Black women, they ain't got you in mind when it's coming to this pro-life shit. They don't want you to have more babies. <laughs> they don't want you to have more babies. They want their women to have more babies. And not just because they want loving families and shit like that. They just want more of them. So they're uh, uh, um, what they view what they view as their white superior culture can thrive and maintain its dominance over America. That's some sinister shit. That's some sinister shit, dog. So when you look at this Project 2025, don't get caught up in it and think that they're for you. I dig you if you may be pro-life, like if you truly pro-life, okay? Because I was once pro-life with exceptions. And I had a long discussion with my wife and she moved me to pro-choice. And it's still hard for me to really even say pro-choice like that. I'd rather call myself pro-life in the, in, the, in the truest sense, okay? In the sense that 
I want policies in place that help reduce abortion. So I think a woman should have the right to choose. I do think that. Because otherwise the government is getting involved with, with something that's that's quite complex. Uh, uh, my, my wife's mother had a big decision to make. I'm glad she made the decision, but her doctor had told her that if she had my wife, she wouldn't have lived. Now I'm glad that she had my wife and she lived. But that was a tough decision. But my mother, my mother had me at 37 years old. You know what I'm saying? When when my father acted like he was gonna get back with her and he didn't. That was a tough decision she had to make. Like women be putting up in some tough fucking spots. So I would like to shape culture, help to shape culture where these kind of decisions don't have to be made as often. Like, like if I can be influential enough to help shape young black men out there so they won't do like what my father did to my mother and put her in that bind when she got to make that decision. Again, I'm glad she made the decision to keep me. But it wouldn't have been no decision to make if he just be 100. When it comes to my mother-in-law's situation, I would like for our, uh, our, our country to put the uh, resources in place for the, the health care of our women so that they don't have to choose between their own life and their child's life. That if you have a pregnancy that looks like, okay, this might be dangerous that there are there's something in place to make sure that okay this is you got this going on but man we've seen this before uh we researched this we got things in place and we're gonna get you through this and you gonna have that baby you feel me i would like to shape culture so so these young men and women out here these teens out here even that they know not to make permanent decisions with temporary people. And so they're not out here having raw sex and creating babies that they can't take care of. They have to face this decision. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the black girls to have to face that decision. You feel me? But in the event that a child does arise from any of these situations and is in and, and uh uh these motherfuckers might not be ready for that child. Me being truly pro-life, I want our society to help that child. Fuck what that parent did, okay? That child ain't had nothing to do with that. You feel me? And I think that's a wise investment. Because if we help that child, uh, help grow that child in the correct way, then our tax dollars won't have to be used in the future to punish that child. Or punish that adult for being a criminal. You feel me? That just makes sense. Now we we can grow that child to become an adult who contributes to society instead of going to prison and being a, a, a tax burden. You understand? That's truly pro-life to me. That's truly pro-life to me. So for all my black women out there, when it comes to Project 2025, and their stands on abortion. Make sure you know who you fucking with. These motherfuckers want to be able to make decisions about what the fuck you do. With your body. But then <laughs> the child comes here. They gonna leave your ass hanging. And you and hopefully your man will have to fend for your motherfucking self to make ends meet and do what you got to do for that child. Now, ultimately, that's how it is regardless with either party. Ultimately, you got to make something shake for yourself. But goddamn, there come a time where all of us need some help. Even these rich motherfuckers be need some help. That's why they be wanting them tax breaks. That's why they be wanting loans and shit like that. They use other folks' money to goddamn finance all this, this shit they be doing. It comes a time where all of us need some help. The auto industry got bailed out. 
the big banks got bailed out. Well, goddamn it, shit. It come a time where all of us need some help. So Medicaid, food stamps, WIC. See, these are all things that these motherfuckers want to cut. And that will disproportionately. That's going to that's gonna hurt poor white women as well now. Dude, don't get this shit twisted. They try to act like oh, uh, uh, our women are welfare queens and all that bullshit. That shit going to hurt poor white women. Those programs were created because of poor white people. Don't get shit twisted. Okay? We only make up 13% of the motherfucking country. Okay? They ain't going to make programs that big and expansive just for us. No, they not. Okay, that shit was put in place to mainly help poor white people. But I'm saying it's going to disproportionately hurt black women if this Project 2025 shit is put to get, put in place. Because they're going to make you have these babies, and then, goddammit, when the baby is here, they're going to leave your ass hanging. And if shit go wrong with the child rearing and your baby ain't doing well in school, us, oh, sorry. Your baby get in trouble with the law, had to do some time, they gonna have a bed waiting on them in these private prisons. That's who we're fucking with. That's who is on the other side in this election. So for all my sisters out there, I'm proud of how y'all are rallying right now. I'm proud of the energy y'all are showing, okay? And like I said in another segment, y'all stand firm in who you are in the midst of all this anti-black woman rhetoric. And know that Project 2025 is not for you. Put it on some.